Hello everyone, myself Poonam Autade. I am tutor in Department of Anatomy, MJ Medical College, Aurangabad. Today we are going to study the topic Spleen. Spleen is secondary lymphoid organ. It is also part of reticuloendothelial system. So it filters the blood, hence also called as a hemolymphoid organ. Now functions of the spleen is hemopoiesis. In fetal life, it synthesizes the RVC. So also called as a hemopoietic organ. In adult life, its main function is lymphopoiesis. It synthesizes the lymphocytes. It sets both type of immune responses against the infection. Cell mediated immunity, also the immunity. Phagocytosis. As it is a part of reticular endothelial system, it contains reticular cells, modified reticular cells and macrophages, free macrophages. So whenever there is unwanted elements in the blood, it is phagocytosed by this splenic macrophages. It is also called as a graveyard of RBC. The old RBCs are destroyed by the splenic capillaries. Last is the uh, storage of the blood. It is insig insignificant function in the humans. It is more developed in the animals. Now the characteristics of spleen, it moves with respiration. It is not essential for life. We can survive without the spleen. It is very soft, fragile. It is dark purple in color, it is tetrahydral in shape, it is wedged between the fundic part of stomach and the left dome of diaphragm. In starvation and in old ages, its size decreases. External features of the spleen. Spleen has two ends, anterior end and posterior end. Anterior end is directed downward and laterally, hence also called as a lateral end. Posterior end is directed upward and medially, hence also called as a medial end. There are two surfaces, visceral surface and the diaphragmatic surface. Visceral surface is concave and irregular. It shows impressions of the abdominal viscera. Diaphragmatic surface is smooth and convex. It is related with the diaphragm, left lung and left pleura, left costodiaphragmatic recess and 9th, 10th and 11th rib. There are three borders superior border, inferior border and intermediate border. Superior border near the anterior end it shows notches. This notches represent the lobulated development of the spleen. Inferior border is rounded. Intermediate border we can see on the visceral surface this is rounded. Now there are two angles of the spleen anterobasal angle and posterobasal angle. Anterobasal angle is present at the junction of superior border and the anterior end. This is a part of spleen which is more prominent, we can feel on palpation, hence also called as a clinical angle of spleen. Posterobasal angle is present at the junction of anterior end and inferior border here. So this is anterobasal, this is posteriobasal angle. Spleen, it lies along the long axis of 10th rib. It is directed, its long axis is directed downward, forward and laterally along the long axis of 10th rib. So you have to hold this like this, visceral, diaphragmatic surface should be in contact with the palm, visceral surface should be directed medially, this anti end should be directed downward and laterally, posterior end should be directed upward and it should make angle of 45 degree with the horizontal plane. So this is the way we have to hold the spleen in anatomical position. Now the visceral surface, it shows impressions, gastric impression, colic impression, renal impression and pancreatic impression. Gastric impression, it is made by the fundic part of the stomach. It is present between the superior border and intermediate border. Renal impression is present between the intermediate border and the inferior border and it is made with the anterior surface of left kidney. There is a triangular impression on the anterior end. It is made with the left colic flexure of the colon. On the visceral surface, on the inferior medial part of the gastric impression, you will find this structure hilum. So between the hilum and the colic impression, you will get impression for the tail of pancreas, pancreatic impression. This is hilum through which there is a passage of splenic vessels, few lymphatics and sympathetic. So this is about the external features of the spleen. Measurements of spleen are, this is 1 inch in thickness, 3 inch in its breadth, 5 inches in its length. It is 7 ounces in weight, which is if we convert it into gram, it is almost 200. And it is related with the 9th, 10th and 11th rib. 
so if you see this measurements all are odd numbers this pattern of odd number is called as a harris dictum ligaments which are attached to the spleen there are three ligaments of the spleen gastrosplenic ligament lino renal ligament and phrenico colic ligament gastrosplenic and lino renal ligament they are attached to hilum of the spleen phrenico colic ligament is not attached to the spleen it is just supporting the anterior end from below so it will prevent the downward displacement of spleen gastrosplenic ligament on one side it is to attach to the hilum of the spleen and on the other side it is attached to greater curvature of stomach lino renal ligament is extending from the anterior surface of the left kidney to the hilum of the spleen gastrosplenic ligament it contain short gastric vessels lymphatics and sympathetics lino renal ligament it contain the splenic vessels tail of pancreas pancreatico splenic lymph node and sympathetics blood supply of the spleen spleen is supplied by splenic artery it arises from the celiac trunk it is largest branch from the celiac trunk its course is tortuous its tortuosity allow it to move with the respiration as it reaches the hilum of the spleen it divides into four to five segmental branches the segmental branches then run through the trabeculae also called as the trabecular artery later on the tris trabecular artery leave the trabeculae enter into the parenchyma now it is divides and called as a central artery this central artery surrounded by the lymphatic sheath so this artery along with the lymphatic sheath it forms the white pulp of the spleen each uh, this central artery then again divides redivides it divides into pe pericilii ellipsoid and uh, capillaries so this pericilia ellipsoid these are the smallest part of this vessel artery size is almost equal to the size of the rbc so while passing through this ellipsoid and the blood capillaries capillaries the old rbc can't change their shape so they get destroyed in this blood capillaries after here two theories of the circulation of the spleen open circulation closed circulation and third is the compromise theory according to the closed circulation this blood capillaries continues with the venous sinusoids present in the red pulp and this venous sinusoid later on drained by the venules according to open theory of circulation this capillaries they drain into the splenic cords and this blood is absorbed through the walls of the venous sinusoids and then carried through the venules so these two theories of circulation are there open and closed according to compromise theory in case of the distended spleen there is a open circulation in case of the contracted spleen there is a closed circulation now the venules they form the veins which emerge through the hilum of the spleen called as a splenic vein splenic vein behind the neck of pancreas join with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein so splenic blood it is reach with the indirect bilirubin it is carried for the process into the liver through the portal vein there is no lymphatics from the spleen only from the fibrous capsule and the trabeculae drain through the small lymphatic vessels to the pancreatico splenic lymph node which are situated along the now the clinical anatomy related to the spleen normal spleen is not palpable we can't palpate it it is palpable only when it is increased 2 to 3 times of its normal size this enlargement of spleen is called as a splenomegaly so splenomegaly is seen in some cases in case of the infectious diseases bacterial viral diseases uh, for example in case of typhoid malaria tuberculosis splenic abscess in this condition spleen get enlarged in some hematological diseases like sickle cell anemia then thalassemia hemolytic anemia in this cases also spleen enlarged so defected rbc these are destroyed in the spleen in some metabolic disorders it is enlarged comas and leukemias also it is enlarged splenic infarction its referred pain is felt on the top of the left shoulder it is called as a kehers sign there are two type of surgery partial or complete splenectomy we can in some condition we have to remove the spleen so we can remove whole spleen or we can remove the spleen in segment also at the time of removal of spleen we should be careful about the tail of pancreas because it is reached with the isolates of langer hans there are different uh, ways of the diagnosis we can by manually palpate the spleen or by sonography also and ct also we can diagnose the splenomegaly we can survive without the spleen also in such patient there is a poor immune response so we should be careful about vaccination antibiotics uh, should be given to such patient thank you